a big mess. Right, a few of you have seen quite a fury, and you've expressed interest in how the hell did I get the lift working so well. These you will no doubt recognise as linear actuators. Um, I've used them in a fair few of my robots now. These are relatively cheap ish. They were cheap when I first started doing this. The price has been slowly creeping up. However, when you buy this, you buy the motor, all the gubbins, and all the extended bits. It's one package that is great for beginners. So if you're new and you want a lifter or a grabber, all that kind of linear action, action, these are brilliant because you just buy it and it works. However, when you get a bit more advanced and you're happy taking things apart and upgrading and modding things, you can swap out this fairly weakish motor for something a bit beefier. So what I'm going to show you today is how to replace that for a 550 12 volt motor. So these are the motors that come with your standard uh, quad, quad drills. So obviously without the, the gearbox, uh, there's a little bit of modding you, ha you have to do, but this is a tutorial without the limit switches, without, okay? When you, you use these, there are, there's a switch back here and a switch back here. And once the RAM hits the highest, most extended point, the switch is activated and it stops it from effectively pushing the RAM out of the whole thing. And it allows it to be able to reverse. And there's another switch at the bottom. So when you hit the, the least amount of travel, and it allows you to extend, say, braking and gearboxes and whatever. So this is without switches. You can buy extra switches, and if you want to be really fancy, I'm sure you can, but this, I'm not quite there yet. Um, Bristol Builders are now selling this switch fancy doodle R box, which hooks up to your receiver, which does effectively the same thing. I'm still waiting on parts for that, uh, and I'll do a brushless mod. But this is the brushed 550 without the switches. Right. Okay, new camera angle. Here are the parts I'm pretty sure I'm going to need. I may add one or two things as because these are not set in standard. No, there are various variations with how much uh, force or newtons these can push and the speed. So these will vary from unit to unit. Um, so you see the 200 N, so it's 200 newtons or 20 kilograms of push. Okay, so they will they can go up to 150 kilograms, which is 1500 newtons. So obviously that will vary to the gearbox inside there to what this one is. But they are roughly the same. Okay, so don't be if, so the one you take apart may very well be different to this. Right, so obviously we need one of those. Obviously you want your motor you gotta replace it with. Screwdriver. 13 millimeter drill bit, a four millimeter drill bit, metal for metal of course, some wire cutters, and a drill. Obviously, the drill needs to be capable of taking your 13 mil drill bit. I mean, I've got a cordless, but the chuck doesn't open wide enough, so I'm having to use this. Um, potentially, you could use a pillar drill, but that involves taking this part even more. And if you're a relatively new at taking things apart, using this is fine. Okay. Out of the way. Three. There should be a screw there. Three. <laughs> so under the screw at the bottom. Obviously, make sure it's not hooked up to anything. 
usually a good start. And obviously don't lose the bits you take out. Okay, three screws out and that should pop off it says. Yep, so there's the low casing and there's all the bleh, complicated stuff. So we're gonna have to take a few of these out, so that's I've taken that out, I can see that melt motor is held on by a screw there, screw there, and another one. Yeah, grease, level eight. Another one there. So should have brought some towel, never mind. So undo those three. And again, don't lose them because two of them you can reuse putting the new motor in. Okay. A very greasy one. Right, so. That should now be relatively easy to pull off. Now, because we are not using the limit switches, I can just pretty much cut all, all these wires. Because the only wire that is going to be involved is going into the back of your 550. If you want to be fancy and reuse the limit switches, you're going to have to play around with these. I'm not. So, cut. Cut. I've not actually cut the one that actually needed to cut the stuff. Oh, yeah, it's probably easy. He says. There we go. Right. So there is our not very good motor. Okay, the pinion gear, all the ones I've taken apart are D-shaped ones. <laughs> God, so that should relatively easily pull off, use some pliers if you need to. Now, the motor you're going to be sticking it on, if it doesn't have the D-shaft already on, you can file it down, so you it will fit. I pre-filed this because... Save time, so that now happily fits on the end of there. Ta da! Oh, right, back to this, just pull out all the mess. More cutting, I how that works. Okay, so obviously that one needs to fit there, but it's not quite big enough. It's because that is a 12 millimeter hole and that is a 13 millimeter whatever the hell that bit is. That's where the drill bit comes in. Uh, the other bit to drill is the two holes, that hole there and that hole there. They almost perfectly line up with your two mountain holes on that but not quite, hence the 4 millimeter drill bits, you just want to go through those and just make sure they line up with that. So I'm going to wipe my fingers and set up the drilling bit. Okay, that's the whole thing sitting in the workbench with drill with 13mm drill bit. 
what we're drilling out is the big hole there where the original motor came from. So make sure it's not going to wheel too much. It's relatively easy. It's aluminium. Aluminium. Yeah, that stuff. So it's relatively. Someone's going to shout at me for getting all the bits everywhere, but still. Okay, and just to save time, uh, four mil drill bit, and we're going through that hole there and that hole there. Hopefully, that's that. Made sure it fits before I started this this bit, <laughs> so it looked kind of like a complete idiot. Right, so now drill the hole. Uh, it's fairly obvious now that, that fits in there, and the two mountain holes from the motor should line up quite happily. Now we take the little screws that came out of that motor, and they just quite happily fit in there, holding it in place. Well, if you don't want to do robotics, why why would you be afraid of grease? Uh, let me re reword that better, sorry. If, you, if you're afraid of grease, don't do robots. There you go, back to it. So, make sure those are tight. I wouldn't say bare knuckle tight, so not to thread, break any threads or anything. Um, probably should really lock tight this as well, but let's get the thing put together first, and then it's something you can do it if you want and I'll do that at a later date or more likely I will forget. Okay, so that is the gear we took out. Um the one that is on like the Fury it had like the pinion went to another one. There was another in so there was two intermediates to got to this big one. This only has the one intermediate I think that's the right word anyway. So I did have to play around with the Intermediate, I think I swapped them over to flip them over so all the gears lined up perfectly. But I didn't have to buy any, any extra ones, they all fitted quite nicely. So slot that back, make sure the bottom half lines up with the big one, and the big one of that lines up with the pinion gear, which that surprisingly does. <laughs> That turns, yep, fine. Oh, so that should be. Oh, there you go, effectively. Um, if you want to use some super glue on to that pinion, because where I've filed it, it can't move down, but it could potentially sort of slip that way. So um, I will probably add some some glue to that, but for the sake of doing this, so it's all done. So that just fits back on there. Put your <coughs> three screws back in. I have no idea where that other one's gone. So, the thing to remember now is that there are no limit switches. I know I've already said that about ten times now, but it's something to be very aware of because. When I plug this into a robot and push to extend the this the ram bit, it will just keep going and it will just fly off the end. What? What? I'm filming. Where's the, the bottles, the plastic bottles? 
I don't know. Go away. Sorry, children. I might about leave it in for a giggle. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Uh, ultimately, when you reverse and the RAM comes back in, um, potentially there's no limit switches to stop it, the motor stalling and potentially breaking everything else. So just be very aware of that when you use it for your application. Right, so the thing now should be get a battery speed controller and um, test this silly thing, make sure I've actually done it right. Okay, found a very old transmitter, battery. The speed controller I was doing the other week, and as I pointed out, you know, you was talking about the um, the red wire in the BEC. You know, a lot of people, you know, all cut it off, blah, blah, blah. Well, because I've saved it, I've been able to reuse it to now power this for other applications. So, uh, okay. Uh, oh, there you go. Yeah. So there you go. That's all the way down. See the motor still trying to turn, so just be aware. Um, let me just do something really silly. Oh, there you go. I've actually buggered it. Okay, well, the RAM doesn't fall all the way out, but something's jammed somewhere, so. Actually tries to okay. Well, now we know. <laughs> we always thought this bit would just fly at the end, doesn't it? It just tries to break itself. So <laughs> that's probably worse. Oh, yeah, there you go. There is one in the actuator uh, modded with a 550 brushed drill motor for extra. Umph, speed, whatever, doesn't actually seem that much faster actually, but it's going to have far more torque than this silly thing. So, uh, thank you for watching, like, subscribe, and all that YouTube stuff. Next time.